from Steam support threatening users with legal action, to the history of Steam IDs and groups, to Valve employees getting doxxed and harassed, welcome to the dark side of Steam. In recent years, unique usernames have become a popular trend across just about every online platform, from YouTube and Instagram to Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and even Chess.com. Just about every website you can think of has people collecting OG usernames on it. If you have one, you feel special and unique and cool compared to people without one. You're not like the millions of others with generic usernames that have numbers or prefixes. It all has to do with basic human psychology. Humans will stop at nothing to stand out and be better than others because it's hardwired in our nature to compete and seek recognition anywhere we can. So now we introduce Steam IDs or vanity URLs, but I'll just call them Steam IDs to keep it simple. Steam IDs can range widely in quality. Usually, these qualities are broken up into three different tiers. You have the really high tiers such as dark or cute, then random words such as arcade or entertainment, which would be considered mid-tier. And finally, the really low tiers like amazingly or contrasting. Other IDs like Caro748 are considered worthless or junk because everyone has them. The cost of Steam IDs can vary greatly, depending on how popular or desirable a word is. It's not always based on how short or common a word is. For example, in today's market, Princess would be worth $5,000 while Has would be worth $500. When appraising the value of a Steam ID, multiple factors are taken into account. This includes the word's meaning, popularity, character length, visual aesthetics, and, most importantly, how trendy the word is in today's culture. This is why cute or edgy words like Satan are worth the most because goth and emo fashion is popular nowadays. Not a lot of people know this, but there are also two-letter IDs, which are very rare. But they cannot be swapped anymore and are forever tied to the account they're on. But this doesn't stop people from wanting to buy and sell two-letter ID accounts. Even though it's very risky because it can be easily recovered or banned. Like everything else in our economy, the price of Steam IDs have inflated quite a bit over the years. In 2017, the best Steam IDs were around $100 max. Steam groups were worth even less because no one really cared about Steam groups back then. You could easily buy super high tier Steam groups for less than $50. For example, the group Broken was sold for $40, but would be worth $2,000 today. People weren't really as comfortable with spending large amounts of money online as they are nowadays. After 2020, Steam IDs and groups started to be worth more, as more people entered the community and caught onto the trend. So naturally, the price of everything went up. Nowadays, top tier IDs are sold for thousands of dollars, and people care more about Steam groups and IDs more than they do about their own lives or families. One question people might wonder is, where do all these Steam IDs and Steam groups even come from? How are there so many OG IDs and groups in the community? Well, nearly all of them are stolen from their original owners in some way. There's a ton of methods people use to steal IDs, which includes, but isn't limited to, account hijacking, threatening or extorting the owners, and most commonly, social engineering Steam support. Some account hijackers also come up with some pretty creative methods like buying used Half-Life CD packs on eBay to recover 20-year-old ancient Steam accounts, or even faking death certificates and obituary pages and saying that the owner of an account died so support can delete it. Just about every OG ID or group was acquired in a not-so-legitimate way. There are a lot of interesting and unique Steam tools that help facilitate all of this. For example, there used to be a Steam tool that would convert a Steam's login username or email address to a Steam profile URL. A lot of account hijackers use this tool as it would help them confirm an account's login details. This has been patched in recent years though. There are also Steam group databases that let you find OG groups easily since you can look up specific group tags or titles that you might want. Account thieves also began monetizing these databases by selling access to them through websites and Discord bots. Next up, we have autoclaimers or turbos that can monitor thousands of Steam IDs every second. 
If someone accidentally released their Steam ID for even a split second, a bot would instantly claim it and the owner would lose their ID. This makes it incredibly risky to swap your OG Steam ID to an alt account even today. A lot of people don't know this, but autoclaimers and turbos are actually not the same thing, even though they work similarly. A turbo targets a single ID by spam checking or claiming the ID thousands of times every day until it's freed up by the owner for any reason. An autoclaimer, on the other hand, checks up to thousands of IDs at the same time. It is usually a little slower than a turbo, but because many more IDs are targeted, you're a lot more likely to claim someone's ID with an autoclaimer. Account hijackers not only exploited these tools, but also competed among themselves to see who had the fastest autoclaimer or turbo. This added another layer to the underground scene, making it not just about who had the coolest and rarest ID, but also who had the fastest autoclaimer. Due to the existence of both of these tools, swapping Steam IDs hasn't been safe since 2018, especially if you have a valuable ID. It's possible to still manually swap an ID, but you'll need some quick fingers and a bit of luck. The safest way to swap an ID nowadays is to use a swapping service or a tool called a swapper that swaps an ID at super fast speeds. Steam support was not a big fan of this. The Steam community website was being abused as Valve's network was flooded with millions of network requests every day. Valve employees faced constant threats as they were extorted and harassed constantly, including their families. Account thieves were having wars through support tickets and trying to ban each other's accounts. Scamming and social engineering also became rampant as new bugs and exploits were discovered relating to Steam IDs. It was basically ground zero and Steam support was right in the middle of all the turmoil. One Valve employee, named Jared, was the leader of Steam's anti-fraud and anti-hijacking team at the time. After someone found out that he had ordered a fridge online and mentioned it in a support ticket, Jared understandably got upset and made it his life's mission to stop all of this. He did not take threats lightly to say the least, especially if a support agent's being harassed on a daily basis. Jared went after the community with a vengeance. The people involved were served cease and desist letters and threatened with legal action for extorting Valve employees. Jared also started monitoring Steam ID sellers on market forums and mass locking all of their accounts. He would swap their IDs to freshly created Valve accounts that no one can steal or recover. Every popular ID seller was also manually profiled and stored inside an internal Valve database for daily monitoring. A well-known person known as Air, who was infamous for hoarding IDs, had all of his accounts community banned. Every account he ever logged into was banned, including the accounts of his many customers that he sold IDs to or swapped for. Another even more notorious person, who went by Alice, was infamous within the community for autoclaiming every ID under the sun. Alice made the first Steam autoclaimer that could check thousands of IDs per second, whereas before only one ID could be targeted at a time. It is said that Alice autoclaimed and sold over 600 Steam IDs within a single year, which would amount to over $50,000 in profits per year assuming that each ID was sold for an average of $100. That's quite a lot of money for just claiming Steam IDs. A lot of Alice's accounts were banned, including dozens of their ID accounts and all of their accounts used for auto-claiming. Every account they logged into would get automatically community banned as they became forbidden from using Steam. Jared made it very clear that the Eye of Sauron was watching them, and if they didn't rein in their activities, Valve could pursue legal action against them. Since almost all ID sellers were Russians, Valve singled out Alice as they were located in the United States. It seems Valve might have wanted to make an example out of them, or it might have just been some threat to scare them away. We'll never know since Alice left the community and never showed up again. After all of the biggest ID sellers were banned, dozens of high tier Steam IDs were lost forever. To this day, many of these IDs are still banned and sitting on Valve accounts that no one can touch or get access to. 
Over the years, many Steam users have become deeply involved in the business of selling and buying Steam IDs in groups. It became about more than having a cool ID or group for attention, but an important source of income for many people. Although compared to more mainstream sites like Instagram or Twitter, where a single username can cost over 20000 it doesn't stop people from spending countless hours trying to acquire, flip, or steal every Steam ID and group. One person, who went by Wilco, was infamous for hoarding Steam accounts. At one point, he was the owner of over 200 OG groups across dozens of accounts. Many of the groups you see today were once owned by Wilco, or have cycled through him in some way. Another person, named Maxine, spent a good amount of his late grandma's inheritance on OG usernames. He bought Lolly on Twitter for 5k, which ended up getting banned. He bought Satan for 3k on Steam, which also ended up getting banned. And he bought the Xanax domain for thousands of dollars as well, which is still up. But unfortunately for him, people stopped caring about the website a long time ago. Next, we have Waxley, who lurks the Steam markets 24-7 for good deals. He is seen as a bit of a cheapskate in the community for lowballing everyone, and reselling IDs and groups for 10 times their value. He is similar to Wilco, and not because they're both serial e-daters, but he also hoards groups and IDs across hundreds of manually registered accounts. It's safe to say that this is probably his full-time job. Lastly, we have Av and Yanni, who have also become prominent figures in the scene in recent years. It's been said they've made up to six figures from just swapping IDs and selling them. So it can be a pretty profitable business if you're committed to it. These days, Steam support is much more passive and doesn't really seem to care too much about what group or ID sellers do anymore. Probably because they realize that no matter how hard they try, they can't stop people from doing what they want, and they can't kill the OG market, which only continues to grow every year. Valve has made some improvements though. At the start of 2014, they finally implemented a system to censor and block certain Steam IDs from being used. For example, a lot of IDs like Sarah or Rapper or 420 don't link to any profiles if you look them up on Steam, but no one can actually grab these IDs. Prior to this, Steam support had to manually swap IDs to Valve created accounts because they didn't have a system implemented for censoring IDs. A large reason they made this change is because users who owned racist or offensive IDs like ID Hitler or ID Nword were getting reported every day. Valve would release the ID off their account and an hour later someone else would grab it, thus repeating the cycle which is why some Steam IDs have been used on a hundred different accounts because Valve keeps releasing them and people keep reporting them. Anyway, prices for Steam IDs are still super inflated, but the OG Steam community is smaller now and much less chaotic compared to how it was back then. What was once essentially an online battlefield with doxing wars and people swatting each other over Steam IDs every day has transformed into a more regulated and neutral marketplace in recent years. Steam support will still occasionally ban someone's accounts if they're a frequent troublemaker, but it's pretty rare. A lot of people also found out that even if an account is community banned, you can just delete the account to release a Steam ID. Looking ahead, Steam IDs will likely only become more expensive as high tier IDs continue to get censored or banned, thereby reducing the available pool of OG Steam IDs. Add in basic economic inflation, and we can expect some pretty exponential price increases. But who knows, maybe this has all just been a temporary trend that'll die off in a few years and people will stop caring about Steam IDs or groups like back in 2010. Thanks for watching. I'm upset. I'm upset at these niggas over here, man. They're saying that a nigga is auto claiming. And they get mad about that. It's a double-edged sword, though, right? Because when you fucking ruin people's lives and you extort them or you crack their fucking Instagram or Twitter or you jack their fucking email and their Bitcoin, it's cool, though, right? But when you want to swap a name that I don't even know you're swapping and I hit it, you want to talk shit? Fuck you.